Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving women leaders. And we talk about leadership purpose and its importance for you. I am a college professor. And when I am not doing that, I am speaking, writing, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women leaders how to find and not only find, but how to stay in alignment with their leadership purpose so they can make a meaningful difference right there in their career, leadership, or business. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. So glad you're here and that you take time out of your busy day to listen into the podcast. I know I say that all the time and I will keep saying it all the time because I really do really appreciate you for listening and don't take it for granted. And today we're talking with Melissa Keenan. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Melissa. She is the go-to intuitive intimacy expert who helps high-powered female CEOs use their feminine energy as a 10x growth strategy. She's CEO, a keynote speaker, and international and USA Today bestselling author and host of the interview series, Chronicles of the High-Powered Female CEO. And after investing nearly 200K in certifications and training, plus overcoming traumatic relationship experiences, Melissa understands the female CEO feeling trapped in a masculine. She helps the female CEO gain time, freedom, intimacy, and fulfillment without losing momentum. And when she's not doing all that, Melissa enjoys dancing and singing and working and praying at her hobby ranch in Nevada, where she lives with her husband, CJ, and their four children. Welcome, Melissa. (laughs) Thank you. So good to have you here. I'm glad to be here. So now everybody heard me read your bio, your, you know, but let's hear in your own words, really about who you are and the work you do. Thank you. I love working with high powered women. I love working with women who have big vision and I have yet in my field to meet a woman who was in it for like, shall we say selfish reasons? Like every woman I have ever met, it's like, I have this huge like calling and I have this big work that I am meant to do in the world and I'm going to hire teams and I'm going to invest in myself and invest in um, my business in order to make this happen. And women like this, it seems to me that as soon as they step in courageously to that big vision, everything that they hold precious and sacred falls under attack their relationships, their connections that they have, their pleasure, their joy. And and that to me is a huge tragedy. You know, I really see that the patriarchy and the way that things used to be has changed. Our opportunity has increased so much, but the pressure and the misogyny have also increased. So uh, it's more invisible now, the pressures that we experience as women. I just feel absolutely called to serve these women and help them because when we don't have all parts of our life, um, you know, in some sort of harmony, it really affects our ability to be in our purpose in the world. Yes. Yes. So what was the, what was the driving force or the impetus that bring you to this work? You know, it really starts before me, I think, um, with my female ancestors, uh, because my female ancestors went through literally the worst things that people could go through on the planet, like in a, in a lifetime. And growing up, knowing about what they experienced left me with like a cognitive dissonance that I didn't know how to wrap my mind and heart around. And so that, that is like the original, like, like I will experience joy. I will experience freedom. I will experience like all that I'm meant to experience no matter what it takes. 
And then I had my own life experience, which was a really difficult childhood. Um, my dad died at 12 and Ooh. my parents divorced at nine. My mom lost custody of me and I ended up living with my aunt and uncle uh, through my teens. And th- there was a lot of violence and drug use and adultery and all the things. And so I, I really... By the time I graduated high school, I was like, I don't want a family. I'm just going to be a career woman. And I think hindsight's 2020. I'm like, oh, obviously, because family was a source of huge pain for me. Like already everything that was precious to me had fallen under attack and had eaten away at my soul. And I had learned how to put up massive walls around myself so that none of that stuff could touch me. That's kind of how I lived my life. Perfectionism was really high for me. But I started investigating a, a, a new church and the church that I now belong to, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And, and the um, teachings in that faith are huge on family. And so my heart started to kind of soften. And I started to kind of think, you know what, maybe... It was just the conditions I was in. Maybe there's hope that I could have a family as well as a career. And I could, um, you know, I don't have to be uh, so guarded or be alone like I had been used to being. And so I dove in with both feet and I married and I married and had my first child by 21. And by 25, I had three kids And then my husband came to me and let me know that he had had a secret addiction our whole marriage. And it was such a blow. And because I had worked so hard to be so perfect, that was like my survival strategy. Here I was like, like, wait a second. I did every insurance possible, joining the church, doing all these things, you know, as insurance so I could have a good family. And here it was like blowing up in my face. And it was a real wake up call for me. And it knocked me to my knees. So I asked my husband to move out, actually. And we were separated for six months. And that was like a big soul searching time for me, where finally all the, I think the passion of my uh, ancestors having gone through what they went through, my childhood, my husband going through what he was going through, where it all started to come together. Like, wait a second, I am meant for more than what I have been experiencing and then what my ancestors ever experienced. And I will do whatever it takes, with or without my husband, with or without what, whatever, you know, to really experience joy. And I realized that the way I was approaching it was not the way I was going to get there, that I was going to have to go through all that pain in order to get to the joy that I was seeking instead of try to pretend it wasn't there. And I thought that was like the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. You know, Um, I mean, I literally had three little kids in diapers um, for two and two months. And it was just like, what have I done? Like, (laughs) you know, Um, and and now I look back on that time as the greatest gift because it just launched me into understanding personal development, understanding how I had uh, utilized my own masculine energy as a survival strategy, understanding how I had uh, built up all these walls and how to allow them to come down and like that there were parts of me that I had buried away in survival and that those were actually beautiful, like reincorporating all those parts. And of course, my husband had a lot of work to do too, and he did that. And so slowly over time, we also were able to come back together and really restore, actually restore is not the right word. We built a new marriage, like we really built a new marriage together. And it's so precious to me. And so no matter what I do in the world, like I now feel such a a peace with the relationship with myself And the relationship in my marriage and with my children and with the people that I love most. And it's just like the fuel for everything that I do. I mean, I went from literally thinking, I'm just going to go through life alone. I'm going to like strong arm it and I'm going to go through life alone to now like this is my calling. It's helping people really feel deep connection and closeness with those around them. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. And good for you for um, the journey, making the journey, you and your husband, 
Yeah. Individually and collectively. That's amazing. Thank you. So tell us, tell us a little bit about how your work, you, you gave us the background of how you got here. Tell us what it looks like in the average day or week. Like what kinds of things are you doing? Yeah, so I I do a lot of one-on-one work because of the nature of the work that I do. It's helping women with their marriages. You know, it's like a woman will come to me. Uh, typically, I'm working with seven plus figure business women. And so she's already built out a big business and she'll come to me with like, but these parts are still not right where I want them to be. You know, I'm entering my fourth marriage. I want this to be the marriage that lasts forever. I don't want to have to do this again. Right. So we work together. But, but, you know, and that, and that's more typical or like she's dating, she wants help finding a partner, these kinds of things. But I, even right now, I'm, I'm helping a woman go through the loss of her having a stillborn baby. And, uh, and I've helped women, you know, who want to just increase their ability to be open to friendships. That's a whole thing for business women. So, so that's why I call myself the protectress of sacred things, like all the things that we hold precious and sacred. Like, I don't think no one tells you, you're going to have to amp up your protection around those things if you're going to pursue this big vision. Because whatever we do, money is always a magnifier, you know, so whatever is there that still feels unsettled is only going to be magnified when we then add a bunch of uh, money and a whole business, you know, to it. So that's why I'm really helping women. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. What would you say you enjoy most about the work? I mean, what really lights you up? Oh, two things come up when you ask that. And they might sound almost uh, the exact opposite. In my mind, they're, they're very related. But I love helping women access their sensuality and reclaim their sensuality. You know, women are the only organisms on the planet that have a pleasure organ. It's women. And, and yet, uh, stereotypically, women are the uh, m- most common to not want anything to do with sex or to have sex as a to-do list or to feel like it's a burden. And uh, not always, you know, for sure. I've definitely worked with women who have the higher sex drive and that's another whole thing that she really needs support to. But, you know, uh, helping her really reclaim that as her own, it's not something that is a duty to her husband or anything like that. It's just hers. And actually, it's a beautiful way to uh, to manage our energy. You know, when women come to me, they typically have done enough work on themselves that they know the value of managing their own energy. It's like I have to be on in my business. So I know I got to take care of myself. But no one understands the value of sensuality and sex magic as a as a way to really boost your energy. But when you're all turned on in your relationships, you're all turned on and excited in life. That's just how it goes. <laughs> so I love like, because who else can you tell these things to? And I hold it very sacred. Like I come from a more conservative background, as you know. And so it's it's like when she tells me, you know, it's like she she would never tell a soul this, but she's over here telling me like, well, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> and I love those moments. And I also love guiding women to their spirituality and deeper layers of their spirituality because uh I really believe we're being called to a new era in our world and if we don't have that connection to our intuition, I'm not sure we'll make it. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, and that looks different for everyone, you know, because uh, everybody comes from different religious backgrounds or no religious background. So sometimes it means she's meeting her own divine identity. Sometimes it looks like her meeting Jesus. Sometimes it looks like her speaking to her mother that just passed on or her baby that just passed on. You know, and it's like, oh, my gosh, those are the sacred places. Like if I could just be in all of those sacred places on the planet, I would just be thrilled. Like that's where I like to be. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like it is a true calling for you. Yeah. Yeah, I could hear it. I really hear it deep down. And you kind of hit on this before. This podcast is for high achieving women. And you talked about you work with high achieving women and you know, when I say high achieving, I mean, professional, ambitious, goal oriented, highly responsible, 
and supporting people at home, at work, everywhere, and yeah. who supports them. So I bring on other high achieving women to talk from your, just in general, and then also from your experience and expertise to give some advice to high achieving women. So in that vein, I'll ask you two questions and we'll deal with the first one. What do you think is a challenge that high achieving women face? I see a couple of big fears that get in the way for high achieving women. Losing the momentum in the career that she has built up is a big fear. Like I, I've worked so hard to get to where I am right now. Anything threatens the success of this thing. It's like, that's a real fear, but she's also equally and sometimes even more so afraid of getting to the place that she's worked so hard to get to and feeling alone. So, and I find that that, that kind of is almost like her heart's ripped in two. She just loves the work that she does. It's her calling, you know, she, <laughs> she loves the work she does, but she also knows that like, what is life if it's not shared with the people that I really love and in close connected relationships. And so I, I see that as a real challenge for women and it shows up in a lot of ways, you know. I, I meet women often, business women who are resigned to the fact that they will never have a partner. And I, I've never been convinced when someone says to me, it's fine, I'm happier this way. I'm just not convinced. I really haven't met somebody where I feel their heart when they say that, because I think it usually comes from a lot of pain that they've said that. It's like, I've just shut that part off out of necessity. And um, I've, I've met women who, you know, she's the main breadwinner and she's got some like guy sitting on her couch, just mooching off everything that she's built because she doesn't want to be alone. And my heart goes out to her so much because I, I get it. You know, she's, she feels like I have found the perfect balance. Like he doesn't mind that I work like crazy. In fact, he's, you know, full support of it. But at the end of the day, He's upset with her because she's not really turned on by him. She's not very inspired by him. She's not even sure if he has a backbone or what he stands for. We can't really exist in complacent relationships like that. And, and I also see it in marriage. You know, women who've been married even 10, 20 years where it's like, I'm not really fully satisfied if I'm being honest with myself about my marriage but he's a good man. We've already built a life together. It is what it is. This is the phrase I hear. It is what it is. And it's like, but it could be so much more. And, and, you know, for relationships like that, that's kind of my sweet spot. I really love going in there. Cause like I said, let's just sprinkle in a little sex magic. Let's just, you know, um, and, and what she thinks is like, oh no, that's going to take away time from my business or from my, you know, career that I've worked so hard. Actually, it ends up being uh, beneficial all the way around. It fuels back into her business and all of a sudden she has more space for inspiration and for her vision. And she, she's now getting new ideas where things felt stuck or stale before. So like, it literally like uh, this, this, I don't want to be alone and I don't want to lose momentum. It doesn't have to fight against, they don't have to fight against each other. Yes. And I heard you use the term sex magic in there, but the whole thing sounds like kind of magical. I know it's work involved. <laughs> I yeah. can imagine the degree of work involved, but it's interesting. It sounds like, wow, what a major gift to give to someone, especially if they have those turnarounds from those places that you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, so that was the first question about the high achieving women, right? The challenges. So the opposite of that is from your experience or your expertise, what's some word of advice you would give to a high achieving woman today about in any area? You, you know some of the challenges that they face, but from any area, what's some word of advice you would give? I think that when we set our feet on the path of producing and achieving and impacting the world, and that involves money, all of a sudden our compass, like our North Star that we use to judge ourselves shifts. And we don't even do this on purpose. We don't even realize this is happening. But I believe that what the patriarchy really is, is this, it's a small, small group of very elite 
white men that have existed throughout time that have made decisions about who we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be. And it's all based on them making more money, making them richer and not really caring for the collective. And without even realizing it, we're born into that structure. And then when we step our feet into the path of, of success and, you know, we're, we're running a business or we're on a career path and we're working to impact the world, we step onto their little escalator and we don't even realize it. So the next thing you know, it can become so easy to judge ourselves based on these these measures, this measuring stick, the boxes that we're supposed to check off and the and the boxes that we're supposed to fit ourselves into. And in even the most, you know, uh, quote air quotes uh, powerful women that I meet oftentimes have succumbed to this the most. It's like, you know, she's the bitchy CEO and she has to step all over everybody. And she, and where did she learn that that's the way she's got to do it? Well, from the masculine structures that have been in place since the beginning of time. (laughs) So my biggest piece of advice, you know, would be to, to say, can we release that as the measuring stick for our worthiness? Can we find a completely new measuring stick, one that we determine from our heart and our womb space about who we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be, and uh, what we really are? Because until we do that, we will never feel like we're enough. We just won't. And do you mean individually or collectively when you say we Really collectively, you know, it's fascinating. It's just fascinating to me the way that uh, we have made such a hierarchy among people, that there are people who are less than and there are people who are better than when at the end of the day, we all put our pants on one leg at a time, we all bleed, we our hearts ache. And, and so, you know, it, it's fascinating to me because When you think about who we say is less than, it's like, it's, it's just so sad, you know, people with disabilities. Yep. Clearly less than, uh, people of color, less than people, uh, LGBTQ plus less than, and you know, the list goes on poverty, people who are, don't have the same standards of cleanliness. And then uh, really, if you just look at this, it's like, and also women, we just fall right onto the list. But but even beyond that, really, men who are not that white billionaire, like they're on the list too. Everyone's still striving to just be like the shark at the top. <laughs> and when you start to see the world this way, it's like, wait a second. I don't believe in any of this stuff. When did I subscribe? <laughs> you know? You made these rules. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I can tell you're very committed and dedicated to this work. Now, is there anything I haven't asked you about that you like to share with people before we let them know how you can get in touch with you? Uh, sure. I'll share that Think and Grow Rich. You know that book? I do. Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Napoleon Hill. There is a chapter in Think and Grow Rich, chapter 11, and you have to find one of the older prints because they've stopped printing this chapter in the more recent prints. But he talks about this connection between our sexuality, our relationships, our intimacy, and our success. And uh, yeah, it's funny. He calls it the emotion of sex. And I think most people, when you're reading through the book uh, for the first time, if you had this chapter even in your book, you just sort of get to that chapter and think, I have no idea what's going on. I was like all on board with Napoleon Hill. And now I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and so most of us just sort of, you know, blow past that. But if you go back and check that out, that's a lot of what I've been talking about today. And there is a connection And, you know, if you go a little deeper uh, and know anything about chakras and the chakra system, 
your sacral chakra is where your creativity, so your business skills and your relationship with money live in your sacral and your relationship with sex and pleasure. And that's where your womb is and, um, you know, all of that stuff. And so it would make sense that there's a correlation between the two. I find that it behooves business women to really know about this. And, uh, most business women, I did a study last year and uh, polled about a hundred women asking those of you who really understand masculine and feminine energy dynamics, how much of your investments in your business have been masculine energy and how much have been feminine energy. And the majority of them said that 90 to 100% of their investments were in masculine energy. These are things like, you know, I need more strategies. I need more certifications. I need more tools. I need teams and support systems and et cetera. But if we have no investment in our feminine energy, like your money shows what you value. And so therefore that access to that whole other side of your energy is, is not being had. And this is a great like way, you know, look at like, oh, wait, how much am I willing to go for my intimacy, for my relationships? What would I be willing to invest? How does that compare to the ways that I've invested in these other ways? And, you know, can I get past the barriers that would prevent me from investing in feminine energy and seeing that as a beneficial investment towards my business or towards my career? Because it all plays in. We can't compartmentalize. So, yeah, that's that's the last thing I'd share. <laughs> okay. OK, now just a point of clarification. So the to embrace, lack of a better word, embrace and to express that feminine side. Okay. You talked about the masculine, you know, kind of strategy and all that in addition to sex, or is it only sex in the way, which I don't think so that you invite and express this feminine side? No, it's yeah. I'm glad you're asking for that clarification. It's your emotion. It's your flow. It's your connection to spirituality. It's uh, feminine asks you to go inward and look at what's inward. Masculine asks you to look at what's outward and look to external authority or external systems and things. So it's it's anything that that asks you to go inward and find that uh, things like compassion and love and connection and intimacy. It is about, you know, your heart wants relationships. So you give your heart what it wants. It's about what what lights you up? What gives you pleasure? Where do you get joy? Those kinds of things are, are feminine energy. Ah, uh, OK. Makes a lot of sense. This is so fascinating. I can imagine somebody listening right now wanting to hear more about your work and to hear more all about the thoughts that you're bringing forward. Where can they be in touch with you? Absolutely. So I run a free Facebook group. It's called Women Manifesting Intimacy. So if you're on Facebook, just go search that up. And then if you're not on Facebook, you can go to my website and access my free intimacy guide. It's www.melissakeenan.com. And I also have a, a interview series that I run and you can find out more information about that as well there. Okay. That sounds great. I'll be sure to make sure we have that in the show notes. Melissa, you've given us so much to think about. I mean, so much. <laughs> and I'm grateful for you taking the time out and sharing from your vast experience and your wisdom and expertise. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Dr. Robin. Oh, good. Okay, everyone. And if you want to hear more about me, you can contact me on my website, robinlowens.com, robinlowens.com. Or you can reach me on social media. Pick your favorite social media site. Robin L. Owens, PhD, Robin L. Owens, PhD, and I'd be happy to hear from you. And until next time, this is Dr. Robin. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Robin signing off. See you next time.